Hi, today we're going to talk a little bit about solutions and in particular about problems involving limiting reagents, theoretical yields, and excess, but as opposed to the normal ones when we started with uh, masses, we're going to be looking at concentrations and volumes because our reagents, our chemicals, are going to be in solution. So uh, let's just remind a little, ourselves a little bit of how we would normally do this. Well, the first thing that we need to do for any limiting uh, reagent problem is to write a balanced equation for the chemical reaction. All right? That goes without saying. If we don't have the ratios between the two or three limiting uh, starting materials, we will not be able to do this. So that's step zero. Always have to do this. And make sure that you remember your ions, that you crisscross when you're making the products, all of those kind of things. All right, once you know that, the first thing that you would need to do to find the limiting reagent is you need to know the number of moles. Uh, normally, we do this by calculating the number of moles based on the mass. But from a concentration, uh, if we know the volume, we know the concentration is equal to number of moles divided by volume. So we can always get number of moles that way. Once we have the number of moles, we're going to divide uh, the number of moles for that uh, reactant by the coefficient from the chemical, the balanced chemical equation, and that will give us the number of times that the reaction will take place. Whichever one is lowest, that will be our limiting reagent. The second step then, once we have the limiting reagent, is we take that number, the number of moles divided by the coefficient, and we're going to multiply that by the coefficient of the product that the question is asking us about, and after that by the molar pass the molar mass of that product, right? That will give us the theoretical yield. When we try to do excess, the excess will be calculated by calculating the difference between the two number of moles divided by coefficient, all right, the limiting reagent and the, for the excess reagent. And then you're going to multiply that difference by the coefficient of the reagent that was not the limiting reagent, all right, and by its molar mass, and that's how we would get the mass of the excess, all right. So this is just a quick reminder of what we had learned before on how to solve limiting reagent, theoretical yield, and excess problems. Okay, so now, just to remind you, molar concentration is equal to the number of moles of the solute divided by the volume of the solution in uh, decimeters cubed or in liters. They are equivalent. All right, so if I give you a problem, and in this case I say, calculate the mass of the precipitate form when 100 centimeters cubed of 1.35 molar sodium chloride reacts, aqueous sodium chloride, reacts with 200 centimeters cubed of 0 0.538 molar aqueous lead to nitrate, all right, and in addition I also ask you, find the concentration of the excess reagent. Notice that in this case, normally we ask excess reagent in terms of mass. Here I want a concentration, so we're going to have to know our number of moles and we need to know the volumes, so we're going to be looking at that. So let's work that problem together, and I will uh, try to not speak when I'm far away because I don't have any voice, and I'll try to come back. Uh, to the video as quickly as possible. So the very first thing that we do in any type of reaction uh, problem like this is write the balanced chemical equation. So we got our starting materials sodium chloride and lead nitrate. So we're going to write that very quickly. We should recognize this as a double displacement reaction in which the chloride and nitrate ions are going to take uh, exchange places and we need to remember that we have to take into consideration the charges of the positive ions as well. We know that lead to chloride is one of the exceptions to the solubility rule of chlorides and therefore it's going to be our precipitate. So that is the substance that we need to find out the mass. 
that's going to be our unknown. I like to uh, take this opportunity to also uh, write our data and balance the equation. I'm going to go ahead and balance the equation first. And I'm also going to include the data that is coming from the information that was given to us. So I need to find out the mass of the lead chloride. That's telling me that it's a theoretical yield problem. All right, and for theoretical yield problems, the first thing that I need to do is find out which is the limiting reagent. Uh, normally, we would find out the mass. We don't need to find out the mass. We already have concentration and we have volume. And as we wrote on the very top of the page, we know that concentration is equal to the number of moles divided by the volume in decimeters cubed. We have volume in centimeters cubed and we have concentrations. So if we can change our volume into decimeter cubed, we can use those two pieces of information that we have to get number of moles. So let's do the change of the volumes first. Uh, centimeter cubed changes to decimeter cubed by dividing by a thousand. So when we clear the equation, C is equal to N over V. N is equal to C times V. I had these numbers pre-calculated, all right? And so we now know the number of moles. In order to find out which one's the limiting reagent, we need to go back to our um, equation. And once we find our equation, we're gonna look at the coefficient and we're gonna divide by the coefficient in each case. We can see that the amount for the sodium chloride is lower than that for the potassium, sorry, for the lead 2 nitrate. And so the sodium chloride is going to be our limiting reagent. From the limiting reagent, we can find out our theoretical yield. multiply by the coefficient of um, the product that we're looking for. So we look at the reaction and the reaction says that the coefficient of the lead chloride is 1. So we're going to multiply it by that and we're also going to multiply it by the molar mass of lead chloride which I've calculated to be 
So 18.08 will be grams will be our uh, amount of precipitate that forms uh, in this reaction. So we've answered the first part of the question. The second part of the question asks us to find out the, ca the concentration of the excess. And so here we're going to have to modify our method of finding the excess like we did. It's similar to what we did before, but with just a small change. So let me show you that. We're going to take the effective number of moles, the number of times the recipe is made, which is the number of moles divided by the coefficient. So in the case of the sodium chloride is 0 0.0675, in the case of the lead to nitrate is 0 0.108. And I'm going to find the difference, I'm going to find the positive difference between them, so I want to know how much of the excess was left over. When I write that to the right number of significant digits, all right, because we have to take into consideration that there are only three decimal places in the first number, we are going to get the following. Now, that's not an answer yet. We want to find out the real number of moles. To find out the real number of moles, we need to multiply by the coefficient of the excess reagent, the coefficient of the excess reagent, which was, in this case, the lead to nitrate, when we go up our equation, we find that the coefficient is 1. All right, we can see it up there. And so we're going to multiply by 1. I'm just going to write it so we actually see it. Now we have the number of moles. The final thing that we need to do is find out the concentration. And here is where sometimes we can get confused. We need to find the concentration at the end of the reaction. So we have mixed the two solutions together. So the volume is now the sum of the two volumes that we initially had. I ran out of board. And that would be the concentration of the excess. All right? So, um, this is a standard type of problem. Now, use the rest of the time to do some of the problems that we have assigned um, with uh, the sheets. All right? Uh, great. Have a fun time. Bye.